When working in Fusion 360, you often wish you had a way of attaching something tangent to a cylinder, for example, or tangent to a round surface. For example, if I wanted to join using a fixed joint between the point on this curve of this shoe against this cylinder, you'll find I can't even get the origin to align in the right direction. It's very, very difficult. This video will show you an easy method to do this. You'll notice I have a linked cylinder here, so I'm just going to right click on it and open it up and modify it. Now what we need to do is have some attachment points. To do this, you want to go into the top level. Notice this is a component and underneath it another component which makes it a sub-assembly. And in this component we're going to create some tangent points. So to get these we're going to need some work plane. So we pick on work plane tool, pick on this. We, By the way this is three inches diameter uh, cylinder so I want this to be 1.5 to make it tangent. I can use the tangent uh, tangent plane tool if I want it but I'm just going to use the offset one. This will be in the back side minus 150. Okay 1.5. There we go. We got two planes to sketch on. I'm going to sketch on this one first, make a new sketch, and simply put a work point right on the origin. It's on the back side actually, but that's okay. We can see through it. Now I'll do the same thing on this side. And put me a point right on the origin. So now I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now those points are on planes related to the assembly or the top level as you can see right here. We need to lock them into this part. So what I'm going to do in the assembly, I'm going to actually put a rotational point in the center of this uh, cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new sketch in, in space here and just put a point right in the center on the origin. I'm going to now take and put a joint. It's going to be a rotational joint between the point I just put and the center of the cylinder. So as you can see, it rotates around that point. And notice that the points are right on, staying still on the side. I'm going to go ahead and save this and return back to the other assembly. Back in the other assembly I must do an update so that the link component updates. Now you'll see that we have those points and it's right on the surface. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make me, I'm going to use a rigid joint to start with. A rigid joint between this point on that shoe which is in the center of the curve right there and that point we just put. Notice that the little uh, uh, joint origin now points in the right direction. So if I pick on that, I have a perfect tangent. So there's a quick way to get a tangent. Let's take this a little bit further. So now I want to do a special joint just to show you some manipulations of those points. So what I'm going to do is the same thing in this model. I'm going to put a rotational point in the middle of this assembly. So I can put the cylinder on it and rotate it. So I'll put a point right there. You'll notice I use sketch points quite a bit for an attachment point for joints. I want to put a rotate, revolve between the center of this and that point I just put. Notice everything moves over, don't be alarmed. When you say update, it'll update in place. Now if I take and actually animate that revolve, notice what happens. The point, the tangent point rotates with the cylinder. That's because it is a part of this assembly. Let's change things around a little bit so it 
performs differently or acts differently. First of all, I'm going to remove the rigid joint holding the shoe in place. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to break the link between of this subassembly. So I'm going to break the link. So I still have my cylinder rotating around the origin. There's my rotational uh, joint. And what I'm going to do now is expand this and find the sketches for this point and the one on the back. That point right there. So if I go in here and expand it, I'll turn it on and off till I find it. That's it right there. On the other side, let me be sure and find the right one. I believe it's the last one. It is not. It is this one. So it's the first two. So what I do now is simply left click and drag them to the top level. It may take a, just a little bit doing to drag them up there. So now those sketch points have been moved from this subassembly to the top level. Now I'm going to add the shoe back to it. I'm going to use a slider joint this time for a different process. I'm going to go between the same point on the shoe and that tangent point. It's going the wrong way, so I'm going to modify what a custom setting. I want to go along the length. Okay, so now what we're going to do is go back and run the revolve again, animate it, and watch what happens. Instead of the shoe going around with the rotation, it is now fixed in space because we move the points, tangent points on the cylinder to the top level. This is a really cool trick so you can make things set in position. Now let's have a little bit of fun with it. Let's go to the slider and let's add the joint limits. The minimum and maximum, the minimum is going to be minus 1.3. This is a 3 inch long cylinder. I want to keep it on the length and this will be positive 1.3. So I say OK. Now, I want to do a motion link between this slider and your, if you remember the joint on the actual assembly here, the revolve. So I'll do a motion link between those two. Motion link between this revolve and this slider. And you see we now have a fishing reel type apparatus where we have a rotating body and a sliding guide. Hope you enjoyed this and I hope it will help you do better modeling in Fusion 360.